Glory to God. Well, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this privilege and opportunity tonight to come before your people. I want to thank you for divine utterance tonight. Touch my heart, speak through my mouth, and let me proclaim the oracles of God boldly. Let the word of God flood me tonight, Father, in such a way that the incorruptible seed of it will land on the hearts of every believer. It will take up root and residency there, and it will manifest itself into a harvest of blessings that only your word can produce in the life of a believer. And you said if we know the truth, you said to those Jews in John 8, 31, 32, that if we would continue in your word, we would not only be your disciples in need, but we would know the truth, and the truth would make us free. Amen. And so we're grateful for your word, we're grateful for the truth, and we're also grateful to the audience that will hear this throughout the nations on this video, and I want to extend our courtesy to you. I want to also thank my pastor, Pastor Ronnie Thomason, in Cornerstone Church for the privilege and opportunity to bring to you the Word of God. And what we're doing is beginning our first series here at the church on kingdom financial principles and it's biblical economics for the end time harvester or harvesters, praise God. There is an end time harvest. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few, Jesus said. And to be part of that harvest, uh, we're going to learn why God has made provision for it in this season, Amen. in this hour, and particularly in this end time harvest period. So bless you. We thank you. And again, we'll be giving you more information later to where you can reach out uh, to us at the church. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I want to start, too, before I get into the word, to tell you, too, that God loves you. Okay? And all of giving revolves around love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Can you say amen? Amen. John 3, 16. See, Jesus himself was a seed. The kingdom of God operates through what is known as seed time and harvest. Jesus, of course, being the seed, Luke 8 tells us that, that the mystery is this, is the seed is the word of God. In John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And, it, I, and then the word became flesh and dwelt among them, and they beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Yeah. So bless God. His word is seed. He is the word. You cannot separate God from his word. Yeah. All right. Let's begin our study by, uh, I'm going to quote a scripture you can look at if you have your Bibles or your pads or whatever you use. It's found in 2 Timothy 3.16. We've been using this lately. And it reads this. That all scripture, say with me, all scripture. All, all scripture. Is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, and for reproof, and for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Why is this so important? It's because the devil fights this message is why. Mm-hmm. All right. He fights it by taking it to an unscriptural extreme. He fights it by encouraging a false humility and unteachableness. Many well-meaning uh, Christians think that God doesn't care about their material welfare. But the Bible says that poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. That is found in Proverbs, if you're taking notes, uh, 13 verses 18 through 22. Can you say amen? amen? We must be armed with this knowledge and truth and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You, we'll read another scripture too from to you from Job. It's found in Job 36, and we're going to break into verse 9. Then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. Or in other words, he showed them their sin. Yeah. Verse 10, he opened also their ears to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity. Verse 11, if they obey in serving, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6 that God's people are destroyed 
for a lack of knowledge or because they reject knowledge. But notice our opening scripture says that all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. This is why, you know, many believers or people that are coming to the Lord, non-believers for that matter, they go, well, it's just a book. You know, uh, some guy named Isaiah said that. Or some, you know, guy named, uh, you know, uh, right, Ezekiel uh, said that. But guess what? He said it by inspiration of the Spirit of God. Okay? The Bible says that God in the book of Amos said he does nothing unless he first reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Yeah. In Second Chronicles 20, 20, it said if you believe those prophets that were inspired by the word of God, you'll prosper. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. So what we want to do too tonight, I told you that we're going to take and uh, start out just with some very basic foundational things. I'm not going to run a ton of scripture tonight. Um, what we want to first do is realize and recognize God as owner. To realize and recognize God as owner. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, verse 50, or excuse me, chapter 50. And we're going to look at verses 10 through 15. forbid we look at it, it'd be easier to make it up as we go along and God forbid we look at the word and find that it's truth <laughs> we must realize and recognize God as owner I want to make one commentary to him I'll give you another scripture it's found in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 the apostle Paul writing to the church at Rome said don't be conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind Ephesians tells us that this is accomplished by what is known as the washing of the, by the water of the word of God. In this area in particular, and it's not just, you know, just in this area, in every area of our life, we have to be renewed in our mind. We have to have renewed thinking. But particularly in the area of finance, and this is biblical economics, not the world system. It's God's system of economy. Amen. The Lord, his system, which is the kingdom of God, is an upside-down system. Well, what do you mean by that, Brother Jim? And by the way, for those that are watching by video, forgive me, my name is Jim Davis, and I'm a teacher here at Cornerstone Church. That way you know who I am. And I am an educator in, in the area of biblical economics. Well, what do you mean it's an upside down kingdom? Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, see, give, and it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And with the same measure, and we determine that measure, with the same measure or the amount of seed you sow, it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. Amen. But the, the right, so that's that's God's system. That's Jesus talking. The world says, no, hang on to it. Be greedy. Don't give it to nobody. Yeah. Example, the word of God says, you know, that it goes so far as talking about love. Mm -hmm. And I can't emphasize that enough, too, because it all faith works by love. Yeah. This works by love. Amen. Love gives. Okay? Love it's a, it does that. Hatred is the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's a taker. It withholds. Does that make sense? Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. When you love somebody, you want to help them. Yeah. You want to give to them. Right. So we, our mind must be renewed to this because the Bible also says in Corinthians that it's, if we got time, we'll turn over there, but it, that it's foolishness to the natural mind. Mm -hmm. This is totally foolishness to the natural mind. All right, but back to realizing and recognize God as owner. We must have our mind renewed when it comes to stewardship. We are stewards. We are not owners. Once your mind is renewed to that and you accept that, when you realize that you brought nothing into the world 
and it's certain that you'll take nothing out, every, things will begin to change, particularly in the way you handle God's resources because it all belongs to God. Well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't either, except for Psalms 50. Let's look at verse uh, 10. Let's break in then. For every, every beast of the field is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Verse 11, I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Say, are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. And you say amen? Amen. Uh, verse 14, offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High God. Proverbs tells us don't vow a vow and defer from it. Okay? Amen. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Amen. But unto the wicked, God says, what hast thou to do or to declare my statutes, or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at another one. Listen. First Chronicles. 29. First Chronicles 29. And we're just going to look at two verses that are very powerful there and very true. One of my favorite two verses in the Bible. When you're there, say amen. First Chronicles 29. Also, that's why you got your tablets. You can write it down. Speaking of which, Habakkuk. Uh, the prophet of God said in Habakkuk 2 verses 2 through 3 to write the vision on tablets or on tables or tablets Amen. that he that reads it and make it plain he said that he that reads it may run with it so this is why Amen. you're also given these your books to where you can take notes you bring a bible this is also for people that are watching by video I know many of you may not have a bible later get in contact with us at Cornerstone Amen. We'll see to it you get one. I'll see to it you get one. Bless God. We want to bless you. God loves you. He wants to bless you. We know that many impoverished countries will ultimately be hearing this. It's not the only night we're going to be doing it. Every Thursday night we're going to be doing this for weeks Amen. on end. When the class ends, we will begin a new one. So you're going to be armed with an, a tremendous amount of knowledge. And really way before it ends, your mind will begin to be renewed. To the fact that God wants not only wants you to prosper, but why He wants you to prosper. Yes, All right, verse eleven: Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and the earth is Thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and Thou art exalted as head above all. Yes. Verse twelve: Both riches and honor come of Thee. And thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is the power and might, and in thy hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Mm -hmm. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses speaking to the children of Israel, said in Deuteronomy 8.18, to remember the Lord thy God, for it's he that gives you the power to get wealth yeah. in order that he might establish his covenant as he swore unto our forefathers as it is this day. And who are they? Abram, Isaac, Jacob, the Jewish people, but particularly the Abrahamic yes. covenant. People that obeyed the articles of that covenant, we're not going to go there tonight. We will later. All right. We're going to examine all of that. It's very important that you learn this because God is a covenant-making God. Oh. This ring, my wife is sitting here in front of me. She has the same type band on. This represents covenant. It's an unbroken circle. Okay? Everything God does, he does twofold. Two main things. One is by way of his word. He said, heaven and earth and even hell will pass away, but my word never will. Jesus has been given a name above every name that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall ultimately confess that he is Lord. But he says in his word that he exalts his word, which he is the word, but his his word, the word that's went out of his mouth, even above all his name. Isaiah prophesying by inspiration of the Spirit of God, according to what we heard over here in 2 Timothy 3.16. 
scripture that was inspired by God. Amen. said, so shall my word be that's gone forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper, beloved, the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. Third John 2 says, beloved above all things. And that's you watching by video. Beloved above all things. God wants you to prosper and be in good health, oh, yeah. even as your soul, your yeah. thinker, feeler, chooser, mm -hmm. your mind, mm -hmm. your will, and emotions prosper. Yeah. It is the w will of God's. In mm -hmm. fact, faith begins, listen to me, beloved, faith begins where the will of God is known. Amen. Independent of the will of God, you cannot have what is known as Bible faith. Mm -hmm. So I'm throwing that out there too. I said two things. All right. Number one is his word. It's how he moves. And number two is via covenant. Mm -hmm. It's via covenant that he's made with his people. The word testament, where we get the Old Testament and then you get the New Testament. The word testament means will. Now, when you leave a will to someone, in that will, when you pass on, whatever you put in that will is what they receive. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. This is God's will. The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> this is the shop manual to the Christian. Can you say amen? Amen. All right. So concerning stewardship, it's important. We've looked at a couple things here. It's important to realize and recognize God as owner. Okay? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 4.2. We can turn there and look at that. And those also that are watching by way of video that will ultimately see this, you'll go, well, why does he turn there? Two reasons. Number one, I want you to see that I'm reading it, that I am literally taking it out of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And two, I want to encourage you to, if you have a Bible or you can get a hold of one, mm -hmm. to start studying the Word of God. Become a student, and particularly in this area. Yeah. 2 Timothy 2.15 says to study. That's different than just reading. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, that rightly divides the word of truth or the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now that we've established the fact that God is owner of everything, okay? Yes. 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says something about that. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man or a woman be found faithful. Yeah. The other thing, one of God's other names is faithful. God is faithful even when we're not faithful. Amen. God, we may break covenant sometime. We can repent and get back in, get back in the game. God never will. God is always faithful, 24-7, always, around the clock. Yeah. God will never break covenant, ever. He's forever even married to the backslider. We don't want to backslide, but God, when you get born into God's kingdom, and I hear the Lord, I'll take a minute about that. Thank you, Lord. Those that are among us tonight, I know them all. They're all born into God's kingdom. Let's turn to John chapter 3. The Lord wants me to digress here and go. It's very important. And again, particularly being this is going out, I'm so excited about what I know God's going to be doing in the nations. I have a prophecy that I'm going to share. It's concerning not only us, it's really fitting too for what's going on right now with this coronavirus and particularly what's happening in, the e in our economic system throughout the world. Uh, things are rapidly changing. Um, we're moving toward, if you will, too. Although this is not an end time teaching, I do not believe the Lord's coming back tomorrow. I don't. Scripture is just, it's just not enough fulfilled. And the Bible says, actually, no man knows the hour except God. He does show us the times and seasons. Yeah. 
yeah. that we can look for it. Okay, but mm -hmm. why am I even talking about that a second? Think about digital currency as an example. See, this whole thing about bar scanning and all that that happened years ago, they've been doing that in grocery stores for years. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Well, all this is, a, and now they have, you know, they'll put chips and animals to where you can find your dog or your cat if you lose them, okay? Well, your smartphones, they're smart all right. Right now, the government knows exactly where we're at or the powers to be there, you know, they know. They know right now, they know the address, they know where we're sitting, everything. Yeah. We already live in a society, okay? Yeah. We already, I say, beloved, live in a society that ultimately will be ruled through finance. The Antichrist, when he comes back, will do two things. Predominantly, he will promise peace and actually bring it for a short period of time because the world is just going to get darker and darker and darker. He comes along with that solution. Then he breaks his peace treaty, and guess how he rules the world system? It's the old saying, it's the golden rule. The guy or the gal with the gold makes the rules. The Bible says clearly in the book of Revelation, nobody will be able to buy or sell, try to do anything unless they bear the mark in their forehead or in their hand, period. He will not only be able to track everybody where they're at, but if they don't take it, they'll be martyred for the Lord. Amen. No problem. If I live to be that long, I'm not going to deny Jesus. Amen. Okay? Because it'll only be an instant, and I'm going to be with the Lord anyway. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm just obeying God in this. It may sound like I'm rabbit trailing, but I'm not. Because, again, I know I'm speaking to people out here that don't know this. Again, those in the congregation sitting tonight have had a lot of this teaching that have this understanding, plus I know my pastor. Yeah, and I sit under a pastor that yeah. doctrinally has us steeped in this and we're taught in this yeah. and, and we're privileged to live in America too. God bless America. Amen. You know, it's not an accident that we're blessed the way we are. It's even on our money. It says, in God we trust. Mm -hmm. Think about that, those of you in the other countries the United States of America has problems like anybody any anywhere else. We have our share of problems. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is because we were built on Christian principles and our constitution and our way of life was really built upon, based on righteous living and the word of God. And there are so many believers in this nation. God has, has not abandoned us. This is why we're the most prosperous, wealthy, healthy nation on God's green earth. Indeed. It's because we have so many people here that love God right. and obey him and promote his gospel right. because the commission that God gave us and it's tied to what we're going to be teaching about, we're going to know at the end of all this, we got to get to the why. Right. I haven't forgot John 3. We'll get to the why. And the why is, is we were given a commission. We'll look at it after reading John chapter 3. It's found in Mark 16, 15 through 20. But we're not turning there now. Bear with me. I'll quote part of it. He told them to go and, uh, and us, yeah. go into all the world and preach the gospel and thank God for technology. Yeah. You know, the apostle Paul had to write these letters and send them out. It might take weeks or months to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now... We live in a digital society. We live in a time now where we have not only Mr. and Mrs. Sony, mm -hmm. amen, where every word is caught, but we also have these iPhones and Galaxy 5s, and God knows them, it's incredible. Yes. All right, and it's one of the signs of the times, too. He said that knowledge would abound in the earth. Amen. But uh, at any rate, the why. The why is that we can go be able to, to take this gospel to the world. But I want you to understand that the full price, I'm going to look right in the camera, that the full price of redemption was paid on Calvary for your and my salvation, which we're going to see here in John 3. Amen. The cost of delivering that message is not free. Amen. 
Every time my pastor or other men and women of God or people, particularly in the mission field or itinerant ministries or even just the general church, even as we sit here tonight, it's not free. The lights cost money. The cameras cost him money. The books that we have that we're reading, they cost money. We ordered them, paid for them. Okay, there's not one. The gospel is not free in that regard. What Jesus did is free, but what it it caught. That's why he wants us to <coughs> prosper. Mm -hmm. He gives us the power to do it in order to promote his kingdom. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. All right. Why am I going to John chapter 3? Well, two reasons. One, the Lord told me to. And two, uh, I had to digress to this because before I get into it, too much teaching here, I realized the Lord arrested my thinking and said, slow down, back up a minute. Because these principles are privileged to the born-again believer. Amen. To the born-again believer. If you're not born into God's kingdom, see, when you get born into God's kingdom, and I'm going to be so bold as to say it this way, it's more than just fire insurance from hell. Yes. And bless God, Amen. if it was just that, I'd still be tickled because I don't want to go there Amen. because of one man's transgression in the garden. Mm. Well, two people, but what Adam did. Amen. And then sin passed upon all men. Amen? Amen. But then Jesus came around and did something about it. Yes. Said, not leave us there. Okay, we're, we're stuck there, bless God. But understand, when you're born into God's kingdom, you obtain certain God-given rights and privileges, and prosperity is one of them. Yes. He was wounded for our transgressions, our sin. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace of mind was upon him, and he bore stripes in his body that I'm healed. But Jesus prophesying said this about him when he started his ministry. The first thing he said, am I still in focus? The first thing he said was the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh, yeah. For he has anointed me to do something. To preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. To heal the brokenhearted. Yes. To bring recovery of sight to those that are spiritually blind. Amen. To set at liberty them that are bruised. That's an internal condition and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay? So that's found in Isaiah, and it's also found in the book of Luke, because in the book of Luke, mm -hmm. Jesus was quoting what Isaiah prophesied, and of course, when he came on the scene, he said, today the scripture's fulfilled in your hearing. Right. Amen? Amen? But what is my point? Why am I saying that? Let's back up. God is God Almighty. Yeah. Jesus could have said it any other way, why did he say it in that order? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The word Christ means anointing anywhere, anointed one. Is upon me to preach the gospel, and the gospel is called the good news. What's the good news to a poor person? That they don't have to be that way no more. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. So, beloved, you don't have to be that way no more. But... Let's look at what qualifies. John chapter 3. There was a man, and it started at verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, that word rabbi means teacher. Uh, we know that thou art a teacher, and you come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. They recognize that. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or that word simply just means assuredly. Assuredly I say unto you, except a man or a woman be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now understand the kingdom of God is different also than the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is God's system of economy. It's God's uh, government mm -hmm. here on earth. You follow me? That is very important to understand that too. When he says they can't see it, the bottom line is he's talking about spiritually. They're spiritually blind. Jesus said they have ears, but they can't hear. He meant spiritually. He didn't mean, he didn't mean a bunch of people walk around deaf. Mm -hmm. No, they couldn't understand. You know, later in Scripture, again, for time, we're not going to turn there. We will later. 
He talks about lest at any time they hear with their ears and they see with their, and they, and here's a key word, I, I highlighted it, underlined it, marked it every way I could in my Bible. And they understand. Understanding regulates receiving. And particularly in this subject. But it does in anything in the kingdom of God. But particularly when it comes to finance, understanding regulates that. But again, the benefits of this are privied to the born-again believer. You must be born into God's kingdom. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a valid question. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, Assuredly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, you know how when a woman carries a baby, mm -hmm. her water breaks, don't it? Mm -hmm. Okay? Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, he verifies it here. See, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. He says the wind blows where it listeth, and, and you hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it comes from or where, it's got, you know, where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are, Aren't thou master of Israel? No, uh, not these things. He said, Surely I say unto thee, We speak that which we know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. And uh, he goes on to talk about how he had told them earthly things, now he's sharing with them spiritual things. But if we move into the verse that most everybody, believe it or not, though not everybody's heard it, is verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Notice that though. God so loved the world that he gave his best. He, all of redemption revolves. I'm going to take my glasses off. Actually, Robert's glasses off again. <laughs> he loaned them to me tonight. One of the brothers here in the church. Praise God. Amen. I ran off in a hurry. It's something I never do, lift them in the house. That's extra. Yes, even I make mistakes, and that's why I need the Lord. Amen. All of redemption revolves around giving. This scripture proves it. God so loved the world that he gave. And he gave his only begotten son, okay, that whosoever should believe on him doesn't have to perish but can have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. There's no guilt, shame, inferiority, nothing. He didn't come to Bible beat you. He didn't come to give you the law. In fact, he did away with it. We have a new law. It's called the love law. And, and everything works by including this. If it, it will, again, we'll, we'll cover these things. You, you can know all these principles. You can know the Bible. But if you don't walk in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, which is found in the book of Galatians, right. the fruit of the Spirit, if you don't cultivate, if you don't, um, if you don't take and learn to crucify your flesh daily, it doesn't mean that you won't make a mistake, that you won't have a flesh flash. But the bottom line is, once you get born into God's kingdom, you get an enablement by the Spirit of God that you don't have of the natural. And his name is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He will help you. You will be transformed into another person. The Bible says that he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Can you say amen? Amen. But he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He goes on to say, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation. He said, this is the only condemnation, that the light came into the world and men loved the darkness because, uh, because their deeds were evil. Okay? So the reason I'm putting that out there, beloved, if, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm going to take a second. We're going to go right back into our teaching. 
I want you to simply say this with me wherever you are out there and we can get those to join in. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I believe. I believe. Your word. Your word. And I thank you. And I thank you. For sending Jesus. For sending Jesus. Your only begotten son. Your only begotten son. To die for me. To die for me. On the cross. On the cross. And take upon himself. And take upon himself. Not only my sins. Not only my sins. But the sins of the whole world. Sins of the whole world. In exchange, my sin. My sin. For his righteousness. For his righteousness. Which means right standing with God. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I receive Jesus as my Lord. I receive Jesus as my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That you raised him from the dead. That you raised him from the dead. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. That he is Lord. That he is Lord. And I make him my Lord and Savior. And I make him my Lord and Savior. And if you did that right now, my brother and sister, wherever you're at, Praise God and welcome to the kingdom of God and all the benefits that we'll be sharing in this class. Can you give the Lord a good amen? Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All right. Let's now then do this. Let's move over to uh, the book of Genesis. Let's go to the beginning and see how this whole thing got started. Like I say, this is very foundational, but it's important. Or we'll be talking about it. Genesis. And let's just start verse 1 for that matter. I mean, not verse 1, excuse me, chapter 1. Let's go to verse 26. The book of beginnings, Genesis means that, the book of beginnings. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Notice that word dominion. God gave man dominion and the woman, but he gave dominion to Adam first. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. See, he even gave him dominion over creeps. (laughs) Amen. Now, if you think about what we just read here in verse 26, what did we open with? God owns everything. Right out of the gate, we see that once, because we left out, we didn't start in the first, you know, the the beginning of Genesis. If you read through there, you read all the way up to the sixth day, find the seventh day when God rested and all that. He made all these things, did all this stuff. All right? He refashioned, remodeled the earth, because the earth was here. It says it was, uh, you know, uh, void, whatever. And uh, he took and remodeled it, Okay? And this wonderful garden, this, that, and the other, all that. But I find it interesting to note, and, and in order to get a hold of what I'm going to be teaching you, you got to get this. God put Adam in charge. I'm going to make a bold statement, and I'm going to prove it by the Word of God here. Right here in Genesis, we're going to look at several scriptures right here in Genesis. It's going to shock some people. Some people are going to get mad at me, People, particularly probably some American preachers. The original intention for the creation of man was not because God was lonely. Okay? The original intention for the creation of man was also not just for fellowship, in other words, though God had that in mind. God is in the multiplication business. He turned around and said it's not good that man should be alone. So he created a woman, which means a man with womb. And he gave Adam Eve. Adam looked at Eve and went, woo You know, he liked what he saw. He said, and it was good. Amen. And all that is good. But the reality is the reason God and I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. Create a created man and formed him from the dust of the ground and spoke in his face is what the Hebrew says, but the bottom line is, and he became a living soul. 
was because of this dominion business. God had made all that, stood back, looked around, said, yep, okay, I like it. But you know what? I need me a steward. I don't want to tend to it. I'm going to make someone, in fact, in my image even, and in my likeness, and I'm going to put him in charge of it. And then he turned around and, and gave him a helpmate. He said, you know, it's also not good this guy's alone. I'm going to do this, but we'll give him a helpmate too. And there was another thing about the helpmate. God is in the multiplication business. God is into bearing fruit. Everything God touches multiplies, mm -hmm. period, including your money, Hallelujah. including finances. Hallelujah. Jesus said, by their fruit, you'll know them. So what he wanted to do is what happened. Look how many people we got on planet Earth now. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Thank you, Lord. Every one of them, every one of us sitting here is a product of seed. Mm -hmm. And the male, the man, carried that seed. Zero. And when he plants that seed into his wife, and I say that because you need to be doing it with your wife. Mm. And God made it that way. And he made it good. And he made it pleasurable. Amen. Because God is a pleasurable God. He just, he's just good. But guess what? Every body is a result of seed. You think of that. Everybody. You look around during the day when you go out. All the people around you walk, drive. Just, just think about it in a grocery store if you're fortunate enough to live there. But wherever your village, you can't, wherever you're at, look at all of the people. Every one of them is a product of a seed deposited into a woman, and God breathed the breath of life on it, a living, a living soul, a, a living person starts to form. It's a miracle of God inside of that woman and at the right time is delivered into the earth. Yeah. But unfortunately, the Bible says they're shaping in iniquity and in sin does their mother conceive them. Yeah. When they get to a certain age of accountability, they'll, and what is that age? When they know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God will be there. Their conscience will first show them. But he'll be there to offer the gift of salvation because they're born sinners. We all are. That's just extra. But everybody is a product of seed. Amen. Say seed. Amen. Seed. Amen. Zero. All right. So we go on here. All right. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, he created uh, he them. And God blessed them. Notice that. He, the blessing of the Lord was upon them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, here it is. Be fruitful. He gave them a commandment. Yeah. Right out of the gate. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Who owns the earth? Who we who do we hear earlier owns the earth? God. Who owns everything? God. God. Right. But did God say, I'll subdue it, I'll replenish it, I'll take care of it? Who did he tell to do it? Adam. Adam. Amen. Thank you for that. He told Adam to do it. I'm going to say it again. Verse 28, he said, and God blessed them. Notice both of them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the, there's that dominion word again, over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over living, every living thing that moves upon the earth. In other words, steward it. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb, look at this, bearing seed. The first gift that God gave to man was seed. Mm -hmm. Let us sink a minute. He gave them seed. Why? Because Genesis also will tell us that as long as the earth remains, There'll be seed, what's called time, because there's time with it. Seed time, 
and harvest. No farmer, we eat groceries. Mm -hmm. There's no corn on the cob you ate that a farmer did not go out there, plow a field, take a seed and put it into the ground, cover it up, and then it took time. Jesus said, though, this would happen. First, the blade, you walk out there, you don't see nothing. But after a few days, you give it some sunlight and water. This is what this is. The water, the washing of the water of the Word of God. The sun, the light. You put light on it, you put the right water on it, brother and sister, it's growing. Amen. You go out there, the blade, the ear, and then all of a sudden the full corn in the ear. And then he said immediately they put us in the sickle because the harvest has come. Mm -hmm. Okay? Every bit of it is seed. It all works by seed. So again it said, and God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed. And the cross reference actually is a seeding seed. Okay? Which is upon the face of the earth and every tree uh, in which uh, is the fruit of the tree yielding seed <laughs> to you it shall be from me <laughs> I'm focusing Robert's glasses here <laughs> and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air look what he goes on the whole deal he's turning every bit of this over to Adam and Eve and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life I've given every green herb for me and it was so yeah. and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You say amen. amen. Now, let's move over just right next door. We're going to ease right over into chapter 2 in Genesis. And let's break in at verse 5. Now he goes on to say, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. This is super important. And there was not a man to till the ground. You see that? I'm going to say it again. See, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to to till the ground. I'm going to come back to that. How did it work then? Because it had to have water. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. The bottom line, God had his own irrigation system put in place. Isn't that cool? Yeah. See, we didn't come up with irrigation. Sprinkler systems. God did. In fact, God can't man didn't even ever come up with an original thought. He thinks he does. He'll take credit for it. But he don't. Science don't nothing. We didn't get to the moon because we're smart. We got there because God said there's nothing impossible with them. That's why he confounded the languages. Right. Beloved, and the Tower of Babel. That's why it's called Babel. Mm -hmm. The bottom line, he did that because he had to, he had to slow down the process because they were made in his image. He had to shorten his thing. Yeah. They even had to die. It took Adam 935 years to die because yeah. he didn't know how physically. He was so wonderfully made, plus sin had not made its way in the earth to the point it is now. The sickness and disease and all that would come after the fall was not there. It took him a long time to do that. It's interesting to note, he named all of the animals, all of that, all the animal kingdom, this, that, and the other. Bree had the mind of God. Now, he did this before he fell, before the fall. Watch this. I'll say it before we get there before the failed stewardship. The yeah. fall of man was a failed stewardship. You can write that down. Because it's required as stewards that a man be found faithful. Understand, I'm going to back up now. There was no man to till the ground. So what we see here, the original intention for the creation of man was to give him dominion and for him to steward his creation. To be And, and what an honor. And what a privilege and what a trust was involved in that. Amen. Okay? Right. So it goes on to say, And the Lord God formed man 
of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. Notice that that verse comes after that. In other words, when God looked around, this mist had come up from the ground, watered everything. God saw it was good, but there was no man to till the ground. So God gets down on the ground. Now he forms Adam. So this proves out by way of scripture that when he made Adam, what his intent was, what was on his mind. Do you get that? Back to Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to the world. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. The mind has to be renewed to this. Amen. And we must realize and recognize as I opened up with God as owner. Yeah. So he became a living soul. And then the word of God says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he had formed. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's drop down to verse 15. We're right in Genesis 2. Let's just drop down. And of course, we're passing up verse 9 where he talks about, you know, he put a garden there and said, look, I'll give you everything, everything to do um, with it. Um, well, maybe I better back up and do that too, verse 10. Uh, let me see something here. Yeah, verse 9. Let me do that before we jump down to 15. And out of the ground made the Lord uh, the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant of sight and good for food, and the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden uh, to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and uh, it came into uh, four heads. The name of the first was Spison, that is... Uh, the whole land of Havilah, uh, where there's gold, and it, it goes on about that. At any rate, we'll, we'll still go to verse 15. I'll, I'll just make the commentary. We know the other part of the story. When God turned the stewardship over to Adam and Eve, he said, look, you can run the whole place. I want you to run it for me. You're caretakers, okay? I'm a landlord, but bottom line, you take care of it. You're my property manager. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting you in charge of the whole earth and everything in it. Right. But there's this one tree over here that you can't mess with. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what I think and what the Lord showed me, of my opinion, because of the law of seed time and harvest, that tree, so much has been made about that. Mm -hmm. I believe in time God would have told them what was in that tree, uh, that fruit. Mm -hmm. He said, you can eat of everything here, but don't mess with that one. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Don't mess with that. Excuse me, too. I wanted to see something here. Honey, the reason you said that, this goes shows 830. 7 to 830. Mm -hmm. Any rate. Yeah, it had my mind going. For those of you who are watching, but it's our new series, and our, our time starts at 7, but the class goes till 8.30. Sometimes I make a big break earlier, but my wife was being sweet, and she was giving me 10 minutes because it was 10 to 8. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I'm running out of time. All right, but we are getting near closing. All right, now, I was talking about the tree before we read verse 15 because it's very important. I believe that that was their tithe because here's why before they fell they didn't have to do anything all they had to do is dress it keep it they didn't there wasn't none of the sweat of the brow business like we got now that's why us men we got to get up we work we earn our bread it says you know about a sweat of the brow blah 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 because they had done this the curse doesn't come causeless you know God's like what in the world what have you done like of course he's God he knew but I, the Lord showed me this about him too. Because I used to wonder about that. So well, if you knew they were going to do that, why? You, he said, because I don't tell you to do something I don't do. I had faith in them. Amen. I had faith that they would obey me and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Right. But they turned around because God gave them free will. And they violated that commandment. And they ate their tithe. I'm going to yeah. take these glasses off. That's right. Yeah. They ate their tithe. 
and this was part this was the original part a reason part and parcel for the fall of man right. I'll say it again because it's a failed stewardship it had to be because God told them you got the whole place to run just this one thing leave it in place and as long as you do everything else will tend to it so all you got to do is go around and just kind of just kind of tend to it love on it speak to it enjoy it oh and by the way have kids be fruitful and multiply keep dominion and here's the other thing because see he knew Slewfoot, the devil i look at this it's called lucifer who became satan when he was expelled from heaven, guess where he went? Here. He's the one that showed up and conned Eve, which she in turn did put a pistol on Adam, and they took and partook of that fruit, and the fall was the consequence. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but I just want to get it in this video tonight before we close. Okay? It's extremely important to this subject to understand that. Because again, it goes back to the understanding that everything not only belongs to God and that we, it, nothing has changed in this regard. We are just stewards. We are not owners. Amen. People go, oh, I own this now. You know, I own this new car. I own this nice car. Look at my new car. It's not your car, really. If your mind's renewed, you don't do that. Sure. Look at the car God gave me. That would be the proper response. Mm -hmm. Look at this car that God has given me. I serve an awesome God. Look at this beautiful home God has given us. Even on strange inheritance, the prophet Jamie Colby says, you know, and remember, you can't take it with you. If you've ever seen that show. How many have ever seen that show? Strange inheritance. And remember, you can't take it with you. Well, Timothy said, said another way in Timothy. It says, surely, I think it's 1 Timothy 6, 7. It says, surely you brought nothing in the world is certain. You'll take nothing out. See, I ain't seen a hearse pull or none of it yet. It remains here, and someone else takes over the stewardship of it, ultimately. They die, you know, their big mansion and all that. Some, somebody going to come along later. They're going to buy it. There'll be another person occupying it, this, that, and the other. Amen. And all they're doing is living in what was really God's house all along. Amen? Okay. Just trying to drive the point home. Verse 15, and the Lord God took the man, say the man, the man, and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. See that? Yeah. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for the day thou eat of it thou shalt surely die. And what he meant by that was spiritually he had to because he, they did eat it and he just dropped it. They didn't die right away. Mm -hmm. Now, they did start dying physically, but they died spiritually. Yeah. And also fear came in their life right away. Mm -hmm. God looked for them. They went and dressed them so they realized they were naked, da 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 all this stuff. But what's the fear has to do? Because it's a counterfeit of faith. Yeah. Sin makes cowards of men. Yes. Sin makes cowards of men. And women. That's true. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> so, so this this is. Do you, do you get that part so far? What I've shared uh, yeah. uh, that that to recap, and then I'm going to share something else here. Obviously. Once. Your mind is renewed in this area, okay? And you can turn do this too. Turn to Second Corinthians chapter nine. Once your mind is renewed in this area, and you get yourself in the place of being a good steward. See, God gave us this mind. Your mind is part of your soul. It is not the entire makeup of your soul, but it is. That's why we must have our mind renewed. You follow me? Amen. Your thinker, your feeler, your chooser. 
The bottom line is how I manage things changes when I get to the place where I realize and recognize God as the owner of everything. Yeah. That, that's the conclusion of the matter. Second Corinthians chapter 9, let me show you here what happens once we realize that. Now we know we're saved by grace, right? Yeah. The Bible says, now not everybody knows it, but those who are watching, you're saved by grace, not by works, lest mm -hmm. any man should boast. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? Because Jesus did it for us. What happens is, is that once you're born into God's kingdom, once you take your place as a rightful steward under the lordship, that's the key word, the lordship of Jesus Christ. He's either Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Actually, he always will be. But the bottom line is he's not, he's not everybody's Lord. Mm -hmm. See, you know, if he's Lord of your life, he's the Lord of everything in your life. Amen. He's the Lord of your finances. He's the Lord of your home. He's the Lord of what you're your conduct. He's the Lord of everything you do. Okay. But what happens is once you do that, you get into a place where the Bible calls it unmerited favor. Grace, that's what it means. It's grace is God's enablement. Um, and what we see here, back to sowing, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And he says, Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, God, I don't want you to be bummed out about it, or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, this is what I want to bring out, verse 8. And God is able, or I'll put it in my Bible, willing to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And I wrote my Bible, and be a blessing. I'll go on and read a little bit more of it. Verse 9 is written, he is dispersed abroad. He is given, there it is again, to the poor. His right standing remains with me forever. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower... Notice what happens. He will start ministering seed to a sower. I can't sow if I don't have some seed. Amen. God will supply the seed. He will not only meet your need, he will supply the seed. He will begin to do that. He'll minister it to you. The word minister simply means to serve. Seed to the sower, he both ministers bread for your food, and watch what else happens. He multiplies the seed sown. And notice, too, we're in the New Testament. We're out of Genesis we're over here under the new covenant. A new covenant, by the way, based on better promises. You'll multiply your seed sown, increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in all things to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. And he goes on to say for us, this administration of this service not only supplies the want or needs of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings to God. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm going to take, in closing, and I'm going to read something here. And then we're going to close for tonight, and we'll pick it up next week. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Okay? And I'm going to read something and particularly to those watching tonight by video, I want you to listen very carefully. And I'm going to try, I'm not going to fly through it. I'm going to read it at a pace to where you can take in every word of it. And those of you that have someone to help you translate it later, get it translated, get it deep in your spirit. Because... I am persuaded that this prophecy is unfolding. It is coming to pass. The, the Bible, for that matter, is a prophecy. This Bible is a progressive revelation. It's constantly unfolding. It's a book of prophecy. You follow me? So I'm going to read it to you, and it has to do with what is I refer to or is referred to as financial inversion financial inversion and what financial inversion is is a 
turning upside down or inside out or reversal of position. Here it is. Here we go. Financial inversion shall increase in these days. For you see, it is my desire to move in the realm of your financial prosperity. But release me, saith the Lord, release me that I may come in your behalf and move on your behalf. For yes, 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 there shall be in this hour financial distress here and there. See any of that lately? Listen to this. The economy shall go up and it will go down. But those that learn, and that's what we're doing now, to walk in the word. See, if it took the word to save you, beloved, it's going to take the word to keep you. Amen. That's right. Can you say amen? amen? God hastens, the Bible says, Jeremiah one twelve says, he hastens to his word to perform it. This is what God operates over, is his word. He will not violate it and exalts it above even his own name. When you act on his word, God's going to move. He's bound himself to it. But the Bible says, I'm going to finish the prophecy, the Bible says, I'm doing good on time, so we're going to close early. I like what it says in the scripture when it says that Abraham was fully persuaded that that which God had promised, he was not only able, but I wrote in my Bible, he was willing to perform it in his life. You have to be fully persuaded in your life that God's word is his will for your life. Amen. That God's will is prosperity. And then you have to know the why, which we talked about. You have to recognize God as owner and take your place as a good money manager for God. The handling of God's resources. The more effective you are at that, thank you, Lord, for helping me remember this, and we'll get to it. I'm full, too, so I'm not going to apologize for it, but it's been a while, so I'm really full. And uh, I need to remember it is only the first night. I've got time to do this. It's just I'm, I, I just want to give it all to you. Just I wish I could. I love, I love God's people so much, and God's put this in my heart years ago that I, at times I wish I could just kind of open their head up, open their heart up, and just pour it all inside of them and close them back up, and they just had it. And they just run out and walk in it and live in it. Because I have been able to experience this. I don't just know the word of God concerning it. I'm living it. And I'm also going to be able to give you, i got time to do it too, a little brief testimony of it. And it just happened yesterday. Glory to God. How God will meet and supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. Yeah. For yes, 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 uh, there shall be in this hour financial distress here and there. The economy shall go up and it will go down. But those that learn to walk in the word, they shall see the prosperity of the word. Come forth in this hour in a way that has not been seen by men in days past. Yes, there's coming a financial inversion in the world system. It has been held in reservoirs of wicked men for days on end, but the end is nigh. Those reservoirs shall be tapped and it shall be drained into the gospel of Jesus Christ. It shall be done, saith the Lord, it shall be done in the time allotted. There's an allotted time for it. And we're approaching it. And so shall it be that the word of the Lord shall come to pass that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. In other words, the fulfillment of that scripture will come to pass. It's just been laid up. He'd have me stop there for I finish this to say this. But not every believer will control it. Am I in focus? Not every believer will control it or it will be given to. The faithful, it will be given to. Those that are found faithful. Later we'll learn about that when we learn about the parable of the talents as an example and many things that Jesus taught on stewardship. 
two-thirds of the gospel, 16 out of 38 of Jesus' parables dealt with the subject of finance. There's roughly 500 scriptures in the Bible on healing or prayer. There's over 2,000 on finances. I wonder why. Well, let me ask you this. In your life, are you going to tell me? I mean, there's a lot of things important about our lives. But if you were cut off today, and I know many of you are, but I'm going to tell you, God can move supernaturally. He wants to in your life. But us as Americans that are so blessed, well, you know, and this money thing, you know, when he's preaching just after your money, I'm not trying to get money from him. I'm trying to get it to you. So is God. This is what this is about. But don't, I, I don't like to sit, for people to sit there and think that money doesn't matter Oh, well, if you don't think so, you never had none. But get it all taken away. Mm -hmm. Have nothing. And all of a sudden, all the bills are coming in. You ain't got the money to pay them. Mm -hmm. The J.A. comes out and said, I'm sorry, I don't care. I don't care if you believe in God, don't believe in God, I don't care what you are. No bill, cut the lights off. Cut the water off. Mm -hmm. Go to the store, see if they ain't, no, you ain't getting no food, nothing. It matters. Have a car. Most lot of people out are walking. If they got a bicycle, unless somebody blessed them with it, they paid for it. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. It matters. All right. Here's how it's going to happen. Predominantly in two ways shall it be done in this hour. Those that have hoarded up and stored up because of the inspiration of the evil one and, and held the money for the uh, gospel shall be converted. And in other words, they held up the money that should have been going into the gospel, should be converted. And there was a lot of people, and it's happening even now. There are people by the droves that are getting born into God's kingdom because of the upheaval that's happening in the earth right now. This coronavirus is changing everything in the world system. Everything. Because people are beginning to lose everything. And they have nowhere to look but up. Now, unfortunately, some of them, they won't look up. God call them the stiff-necked people. Some people just ain't never going to repent. They're just not never going to do it. But there's going to be a lot of them that are. All right. It says, those that have hoarded up and stored up because of the inspiration of the evil one and held the money from the gospel shall be converted or born again, that we read in John 3, and drawn into the kingdom, and then, it, uh, and then shall it release that reservoir into the kingdom. But many, many will not. They'll not heed the voice of the word of God. They'll turn aside to this and they'll turn aside to that and they will walk in their own ways but their ways will not work in this hour. That's going to be the difference. It'll be dwindled and slip away as though it were in a bag with holes in it. That is found in the book of Haggai. It says you've earned much and you brought, you brought in a little and it's he that earns wages to put it in a bag with holes in it. He goes on to say how that happened. He said, I blew upon it. The Lord did. Amen. Just blew it away. Amen. It'll go here and it will go there. And they'll wonder, why is it working now? It worked in days past, they'll say. But it shall be, saith the Lord, that the word of the Lord shall rise within men. Men of God of low esteem in the financial world. They'll claim the word of God to be their very own and walk in the light of it as it has been set forth in my word and they'll give. They'll begin uh, to give small at first because it's all that they have. But then it will increase. And through what is known as the hundredfold return, and that's found in Mark 10, 29, 30, Jesus said, I'll quote it. He said, no man has done anything for my name's sake in the gospel that he shall not receive a hundredfold now in this lifetime, not in the by and by, and in the world to come, eternal life. Amen. And it's not just all cash, but it's a hundredfold ultimately of the things that you need in your life. So it shall be that the reservoirs that have held the riches in days past so shall it return to the hands of the giver. Because of the hundredfold return, shall the reservoirs be lost from the wicked and turned to the gospel. For it shall be in this hour that you will see things that you have never dreamed 
would come to pass. Oh, it will be strong at first in ways, then it will grow greater and greater until men will be astounded and the world will stand in awe because the ways of men have failed and the ways of God shall come forth. As men walk in my word, so shall they walk in the way of the Lord. Oh, and yes, there will be some who say, yes, but God's ways are higher than our ways. We can't walk in that. It's true that my ways are higher, even as, even as heaven is higher than the earth. But I will teach you to walk in my ways. The word of God says that he will lead us by the way to go and teach us to profit. It's in the book of Isaiah. We'll yeah. get to it. I never did say you couldn't walk in my ways. Now learn to walk in it. See, this is a learned thing. Yeah. It's not just caught, it's taught. Amen. Learn to give. So shall the inversion of the financial system revert, and so shall it be that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, and there shall be no lack in the kingdom. Those that give shall walk in the ways of the supernatural. They shall be known abroad. <laughs> My word shall spread, and the knowledge of the Lord yeah. shall fill all the earth in the day and in the hour which you stand. You shall know it and see it, because it's of me, and it shall come to pass, saith the Lord. Can you give God praise? Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn, we are closing, turn to Mark, the 16th chapter, and we'll close there, and we'll pick up next week. Mark, chapter 16, is the last chapter of the book of Mark, too. I touched on it earlier, but I want to read it to you from the Word of God. I want you to see it with your eyes. This is out of the mouth of Jesus. If you're there, say amen. If not, say oh me. Okay, we're going to break it at verse 15. Jesus is speaking here, and here was his commission. And he said unto them, talking to the disciples, Go ye into all the world, and to us, by the way. Amen. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, he says, signs will follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on sick people, or the sick, and they shall recover. Now get this, so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and did what he said, preaching everywhere, and the Lord working with them, or I put it in my Bible, or the Lord working with his word. Say so they went forth and did it, but the Lord, he's ascended into heaven, but he was working with his word, and he confirmed, it says, it, and confirming the word was signs following. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. This is the reason that we've been given the power to get wealth in order that we can take this gospel into the whole world. I yes. pray that this has blessed you tonight. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday night. And again, those of you that are going to see this uh, video, uh, wherever it's sent throughout the world, we love you, we bless you, and we want you to know that God's will is for you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And we love you. It's in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Very good. Amen. Amen.